As quilters, we all have our favorite pattern, our favorite quilt block, for that matter, that we, we tend to go to because it's quick, it's easy, we can get a quilt done for somebody really fast, and that's great. Pull some fabric, and boom, there we are. We have a quilt. But sometimes it's also fun to have a little trick up your sleeve, and that's what I want to talk to you about today. If you look at these quilts in the back, a number of them you've seen in previous videos, but what they all have in common is the no waste flying geese block. And that's what I want to show you today. I'm Leah Louise from Inspired Quilting by Leah Louise. And after making many, many of these no waste flying geese blocks, I have found some tips and techniques that will make it so much easier for you. Just a few things to watch as you go along. There can be some little problems that occur or some tight spots that you need to get out of. This is going to help you through that so that your finished flying geese block is perfect, beautiful, and pieces together in your quilt very easily. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. It's time to quilt. Let's go. And we are going to use the no waste flying geese method. And that requires one large square and four small squares. And I just want to show you how this goes together. Notice that on each of the small squares, I've drawn a diagonal line from corner to corner. And that's so I can follow that line to set my seam allowance. So I'm going to line this corner up right there and make sure these corners are evenly spaced. I don't want them, you know, to be twilted off, or right, twilted, tilted off the fabric like that. I want to keep them nice and straight, keep everything square. Now, one of the tricks to this No Waste Flying Geese, after making a few dozen of these, I figured something out that has worked really well for me. If you've ever seen me do half square triangles, you've heard me talk about generous and scant seams. Generous means we're taking just a little bit more than a quarter inch. Scant is just a little bit less. And when I say a bit, I'm talking maybe a couple threads. So it's not significant, but it is enough to make a difference. In this case, I want to sew a quarter inch seam, but a generous quarter inch seam. So just the teeniest bit more. And I'm going to line this up right where I know my quarter inch seam is and just give myself a little extra room. And what I'm going to do then is add a couple extra threads into that seam allowance. And I'm going to show you where that's going to make a difference. Now, I'll come about three quarters of the way down and I'll set the other corner. And we're going to go right across from one side to the other. And so right here, I want to line this corner up and make sure each of the side corners are in line with the block. Now, it's possible that when you're cutting, you might not have gotten things perfectly square and this block could be a little bit larger and want to fan out on the sides where this may be on the inside. It just depends on how you cut and your accuracy. But what you can do is split the difference. So let's say your block was sticking out this far. Then what you would want to do is turn it so that that distance is equally divided or spaced on each side and that's going to minimize any drastic problems you may have. Now, the, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just put a pin here, and that's going to hold my block so I know I can get through this area and have everything straight. I'm going to lift this up and put it over the top. So as I'm sewing, I'm going to go right down over this. The reason being is if I leave this here and I sew, there's a good chance that's going to kick up on me and perhaps fold over, get sewn in the wrong place, and all that drama ensues. So we are going to make sure we don't have a problem. So we get to this point, pull that needle out, and we do our generous quarter inch seam all the way through. And let's do one on the other side. And I have to remind myself to take that little bit extra. And now I'm coming to this corner. And there's a couple things you can do. 
I just get my seam ripper or a stiletto and I'll just hold this point down as I get close. So I want to get that point under my presser foot and then I'm just going to hold right here so that it doesn't flip up on me. There we go. And now I can just do a straight run all the way to the other side. And there we go. Now, when you're doing triangles, which essentially the flying geese is, um, you want to cut off these corners. And there are a number of different ways to do it. But for me, what I do at this point is I just cut that littlest bit off Maybe it's not even a quarter of an inch, but it's the dog ear that's going to hang out over the edge of the block after the fact. And so I just trim that off now, don't have to deal with it later, and that just works out really well for me. Now what I want to show you here is that if I put my ruler, let's see, we'll do it this way, I'm going to put a line in the center. I have... I want to say exactly half an inch, but just the slightest bit more than a half inch seam because we've got a quarter on each side. Now the reason this is important is when I am now going to come back and cut on that line, I'm going to fold this up and this is going to be my next step in the flying geese. But notice we have a raw edge right here. Let me show you what happens if you don't get the right seam. So right here, I have my my line and I took a generous quarter inch seam and see how this raw edge falls inside. It doesn't, it doesn't hang over excessively. So when I line up this point, okay, this is my center right there. And I'm going to sew across here. I need this to be within that quarter inch seam allowance in order for this raw edge not to be exposed on the front of the quilt. So let's say I'm just going to take this straight line on my ruler and line it up with the edge that I've sewn. And if you see from this line to here is one quarter inch, that fold right there is just shy of a quarter of an inch and that means that this raw edge get my my seam ripper again this raw edge will fall inside the seam now let me show you on the other side I took a narrow edge or a narrow seam here intentionally to show you you can see how much more narrow this is compared to that and you can also see how much wider this part extends, so if you look here, see from here to there, it only comes over that little bit, which is just under a quarter of an inch. This extends over more, so when I do my seam right here, so this is, this is my edge, and I'm going to do a quarter inch seam, I'm going to have this little tiny raw edge corner sticking out on the um, on the surface of my quilt. And while it really isn't noticeable, what will happen over time is as, as this washes, these threads are going to come loose and it looks like your quilt's falling apart. It won't because everything's held together, but you don't want to have those little threads right there. And like I said, I've, I've made a number of these blocks and I finally figured out I had a couple of them that I had this extending out and I'm thinking, what on earth is that? I don't understand. Well, it's sort of the geometrics of triangles. So I need to go back and take care of that. And after we've sewn our nice even seams down both sides of the line, we're going to cut this in half. Now, I would recommend doing this with your uh, rotary cutter on the mat. But just for the sake of expedience and the fact that this is just going to make this a whole lot quicker, I'm going to use my trusty scissors. My favorite gingers, by the way. Love these guys. Okay, so now I have these two pieces, but we're not finished yet. What I'm going to do is press this outward on both sides. Now, the other thing I want to show you, since we're talking about these inside points... I'm going to put this line on the seam, just like this, and I'm going to put this line in the center. So let's see if I can do this on camera. 
And what you'll notice right here, and I think you can see through the ruler here. Let me hold it up. I just don't know. I'm going to get right up close. Hopefully the camera can focus in. So see where I have this line right on the seam and this line right in the notch because that's where I'm going to make my next cut. And see how this little angle is inside that quarter inch? So I know that raw edge is not going to be exposed. Now, it's a lot of measuring that you don't necessarily have to do. I just want to show you this so if you have it happen, you know it's a seam allowance issue. And if you go back and look, you may find that one of your seam allowances are particularly thin. So just watch for that as you're doing this, and it's going to make things so much easier. So now, what do we do from here? Let me show you. I'm going to take these and press them, and I'm going to add a block here and a block here. And now what I'm going to do is we're going to continue the same thing. We're going to sew a quarter inch up and a quarter inch back. Important thing to look at. We know how to line up this corner down here and make sure these side corners. See how there's a little bit overhanging on each side? That's okay. Like I said, we're, we're, we're human. We're not machines. We're not going to get that exact cut, but we can get pretty darn close. And if we know how to compensate for those little variances, we're going to be fine. And that's, that's what I want to share as I'm going along here, how to get a really good no waste flying geese, because there are a few tricks along the way that help. So we've got this. Let me just put a pin right here so I can show you. The important part here is that this point be in the middle of these two pieces that we previously sewed and cut. So you can see that this is evenly in the center. And the reason that's important is when we sew our quarter inch, it's going to begin right here. That's where our seam will be, right in that notch there and right into that notch here. And this should be your generous quarter inch seam allowance. It'll be just a tad wider. And by doing that, we're going to ensure that we have even um, star points on either side for our flying geese. So let me show you one that I've already done. I'm going to set this one aside for the moment. And this one we already have finished. So I sewed down both sides, and again, I clip my corners as I go. I do this one, I sew up, down, and come back. I clip here, and I clip here. And then, again, you know, you can decide scissors or rotary, whatever's convenient. Sometimes I find at the sewing machine, it's, it's a bit easier just to do this. Now, if I'm making a bunch of these, I would just take them to my, my cutting mat and do them all at once. All right, so now we have this, and watch. We're going to turn this over and look at that beautiful point. And the beauty of it is there's more than a quarter inch from here to here. So if I measure my quarter inch seam from here to here, let me get this to lay still. There we go, quarter and quarter. I still have, that's almost an eighth of an inch, but that's because my ruler keeps sliding off. But you're going to have a little bit of room so that when you sew that seam right there, you're going to be away from the point so that when we sew this and this seam allowance turns over, that point is going to be right on. Now, you might get it so that there's even just a little bit of fabric, and that's okay. Some of my points have turned out that way as well. What's important is that we don't lose that point. Because if you nub that off and you lose the tip, that becomes visible. Um, not critical. You know, you're making wonky stars. We do that all the time. But in this particular case, we want them to be nice and even. So that is the step for making our no waste flying geese. I'm going to go ahead and cut this one. 
And so now, by using the one large square and the four small squares, we get our four fly, uh, no waste flying geese. Here's one idea to use your new flying geese blocks. I love these stars. This block is wonderful. The flying geese, it's a quick method. You'll have it done in no time. The accuracy is spot on. And you're going to love making all these different quilts with flying geese. So give it a try and have fun. Thanks so much for being here. As always, it's a pleasure to have you join me.